fellow YouTubers. This is the Plastic Commando coming to you from deep behind enemy lines. This is my first YouTube video and what I expect will be many more to follow. Uh, the focus of my channel um, will be 20th century warfare, in particular board gaming uh, and uh, the use of plastic miniatures uh, with a uh, focus on Axis and Allies uh, in many of its versions, but primarily Axis and Allies 1914 and uh, Axis and Allies Global 1940. Uh, perhaps later on, uh, we'll look at other conflicts of the 20th century. Uh, but um, in addition, uh, just a little bit of background, I've, I've been into military models and painting ever since I was a kid growing up in the 70s. Um, I've, to, even up to today, I model dioramas in uh, multiple scales, whether 135th scale, 172nd, and all the way down to uh, HO scale. Uh, just military models and dioramas is just, uh, it's just been a lifelong passion of mine, as is uh, board gaming, um, and in particular Axis and Allies. Painting uh, military miniatures, though, is not just, it's not just been a passion, but it's, uh, as I have got older with work and life, uh, it's just uh, it's just a great stress relief from the daily grind of life and uh, it's something that uh, again with this channel I'd like to, to share with you guys and and uh, so my first video in a series uh, will be tying these together both uh, prepping and painting alternate infantry uh, for Axis and Allies uh, 1914 uh, you see we've got some miniatures before us here um, now I will say from the outset um, the sculpts uh, that are out of box, uh, in particular from 1914, in my opinion, are really good. I mean, these, these are just outstanding sculpts. Uh, I've got no complaints whatsoever with these little guys. Uh, but, um, but I love variety on the game board. And uh, as long as though it's got historical base uh, to it. You know, variety for sake of variety is just uh, is just not good. And I, you know, I promise you, you're not going to be seeing any UFOs or zombies on my game boards. Period. So let's get started. Um, this uh, this is I expect this to be a video both for beginners and to those perhaps uh, looking to enhance their game. Um, and uh, you'll see here uh, before us we've got several different miniatures and. Um, these, uh, these are alternate infantry, which I'm going to introduce into my gameplay of 1914. The, what I'm looking at here, and, and actually what is uh, all before me, maybe I'll pan the camera here a little bit. Um, we've got um, uh, Maker, Miniatures Maker hat. Uh, we've got uh, French infantry uh, down below. We've got British infantry there on top. Uh, We've got the uh, Ottoman Empire, uh, the Austria-Hungarian, Hungarian Empire. We've got the German, German infantry. Uh, we've got World War II in the U.S. And uh, we've also got uh, Russian infantry. Uh, do not have any Italian infantry on the board as of yet. Uh, that likely will come down the pike. Uh, but uh, this video, we're going to focus upon uh, the... Uh, infantry that we have here in front of us and we'll talk about a few others um, but I was just showing you this is a, this is a commander in uh, the US infantry if I can uh, focus in on this a bit um, hat does make some uh, some really good uh, really good quality sculpts and uh, so uh, we're gonna we're going to be making some additions uh, to the game using uh, these hat miniatures. And um, one thing I will note that uh, all of these miniatures from hat do match up, uh, in my opinion, really well with the size of the sculpts that come in box. So we'll uh, maybe kind of give you a little bit of scale. And, and this is almost really a similar pose that we've got. Uh, for the Germans. Um, I do like, uh, I'll tell you in particular, I do like the uh, hat American infantry. These guys look great and uh, and I'll tell you too, it's a 
it's a very big box that you get. There's um, there's 80 sculpts, uh, some of them in similar poses, but you'll see here there's 80 figures that actually come in the box, and they did a, they did a really good job on these. And I'll I'm going to get into exactly why I think uh, some of these are really good. Um, hat as well as some makers of plastic miniatures, um, it's sometimes it can be hit or miss. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. These, these miniatures, uh, that we've got here, the Americans, the Germans, and in particular, the Austrian, uh, infantry, those are really good. They're, they're, they're pretty well hard plastic. And so they're going to, they're going to be great for gameplay to paint, um, uh, and to seal and then to be game ready without any problem of uh, you know their guns in particular bending uh, they don't have a rubbery feel these are these are pretty good hard plastic pieces so so that's one consideration when you're looking at putting in alternate infantry into your game of axis and allies um, to kind of give you an example of what I mean, I had picked up this uh, box of British infantry, World War I British infantry. Uh, it's the early version uniforms, which I really like. I really like the sculpts uh, when I saw them online. And we'll open these up here and kind of, kind of show you a little bit about what I mean. We've got uh, several sculpts. There's maybe eight different sculpts. Uh, of course, you get a total of 32. But to kind of give you an idea on what makes a, a plastic miniature good for gameplay, on the outset, they do look really good. The sculpts are perfect. Um, I, I really like the poses. I like the, uh, the detail. You know, we've got a guy here running with a bayonet. That's, I mean, just really detailed. However, upon further review of this box, in my opinion, I don't think these guys in particular are going to make it on my game board. They're not worth the time and effort of painting because I just don't think they're going to hold up a gameplay. You'll see what I mean. They, they're almost a rubbery feel. If you look at the sprue that's got, got them uh, attached, you can just see how bendy the sprue is. Uh, they're almost, uh, you, you can just barely, you can just move them around. And unfortunately, this is just a very, in terms of durability, it's a very low quality set, in my opinion. Um, I'll show you this commander, his arm. You, you, you can just see how he bends. And uh, what will happen is if you take the time and effort to prime these guys, paint them up, uh, seal them, put them on your game board, just within a few periods of play and people handling them, they're, they're going to twist and move and bend. And what's going to happen is you're going to find eventually, if not soon after, your paint is going to start to uh, chip and uh, it's um, it's just not worth it for people handling miniatures and gameplay so i do like these guys but due to the poor quality of this set from hat uh, which is a shame um, i don't think that these guys are going to make it on my game board at all uh, but i did want to show you that just uh, so you can kind of get an understanding it's, it's important to get an idea of the uh, the quality of the uh, miniatures that you're using. Um, so um, the Turkish infantry, they are really good as well. And um, we're going to take a look at these uh, just real quick. Uh, they're mostly still on the sprue, but again, these are these are very solid. You can see here there. This, this is hard, rigid plastic. So so these guys are going to be good at scale wise. They match up great. Um, as does the, um, as does the Russian infantry we have over here. Um, and, uh, which you'll probably notice as well, some of these sculpts and the color does come in, uh, different shades. We've got, uh, tan, we've got gray for Germany and, uh, actually inside with the, the Russians, uh, they, um, just with the color of the plastic, they actually, uh, they actually come in a bright blue. Be perfect if they were French, but uh, they're not. So uh, these will certainly have to be primed and, and ready for gameplay. Um, so uh, we're gonna take you through the first steps. Uh, just uh, stick with me a bit, and uh, we'll try not to keep this video too long. And uh, 
I'm going to show you the initial steps that I do to undertake getting uh, uh, just a standard plastic uh, miniature out of the box. Steps I will undergo to uh, get it ready to uh, uh, prep and paint and uh, ultimately get it sealed and uh, placed on the game board for play. We're going to go through each of those steps individually. And uh, so we'll be, uh, we'll be right back just shortly. All right, we are back. And you're probably wondering why we're filming at a sink. Uh, this is the uh, first process that I undergo when I get ready to uh, uh, prep and uh, paint my miniatures. One real quick thing I did want to show you. Uh, these, uh, of course, are the, uh, the Ottoman Turks uh, that uh, we had looked at earlier. And you'll see they're still attached to the sprue. One, uh, one thing that I do recommend is uh, get a good pair of nippers, uh, especially with the flat end, and it makes uh, life a lot easier than just trying to use a simple X-Acto knife. Uh, put the flat end down and then uh, run it up underneath the, uh, the miniature uh, that you're looking to, uh, to cut off. And of course you get a good, a good flat base and a good cut with the nipper itself. So uh, we'll put the rest of that sprue aside and um, you'll notice uh, on the bottom of most of these little plastic minis, you'll get a little bit of a burr, a little bit of residue. Obviously for gameplay, we want a, uh, a good flat surface and I typically just use a good old emery board. Uh, my wife has plenty and so I manage to raid her box quite often. So uh, I typically start with the, uh, the coarse uh, rough side and just do a flat, uh, just do a flat sand, and uh, it's already a lot better. A little bit on the side there, um, and then over on the uh, the fine grit, uh, just go ahead and finish that off. And there you go, it's really really good and soft and uh, slick. And, and that way, it'll be good when you put it on your game board later. It's not going to uh, have a rough edge and perhaps scratch your game board, which is not not good at all when that happens. Um, so, the, uh, the first step that, uh, that I undertake uh, when I get ready to prep any miniature uh, is uh, we've got to wash. And the reason we do a wash, uh, we'll go ahead and wet some of these down so the water is not running all crazy. Uh, one thing I would suggest is um, when you're uh, working over a sink, and in particular, it's good if you have a kind of a uh, service area you can work in that's outside of the kitchen. You don't want to mess up the kitchen and the house as if possible. Uh, make a mess, that is. Uh, but be very careful not to drop them because these guys are little and they'll certainly go down the drain. And uh, we're just going to do a few of these here. Obviously, we're not going to do the entire bit. I like to get them wet for starters. And then my, uh, my custom step is uh, the first step, Don dishwashing detergent liquid. And a simple old toothbrush. Uh, obviously, you want an old brush. You don't want to don't want to reuse it for yourself later. And uh, of course, wet these bristles. And uh, real quickly, add just a little bit of soap. Get that out of the way. Now, you might be asking, well, look, why why are you taking all these steps? Um, each time the miniatures are produced from factories, uh, they might look uh, with the naked eye. They might look clean, uh, free of anything. But uh, each one has a mold release agent that uh, is present on the miniature itself. And I've learned over the years through just trial and error that uh, you, I mean, you can paint plastic miniatures right out of the box, obviously. Um, you can um, put paint, but if you're talking about gameplay, something that's gonna be handled quite a bit, uh, you need um, to prep the surface really good. And that's to get it free of any type of a mold release agent that could be present that might go against the uh, adhesion of paint and primer. Uh, so uh, just just a real quick uh, scrub down on these guys, and as you as you see, I just about dropped one. Uh, we'd had, had to get the pipe loose on that one. Just a uh, just a real brief scrubbing of each one of these, and uh, put him to the side. Get the German guy, and. Um, this will clean the surface really good when you get ready to prime it. And obviously I do recommend we're going to, uh, to prime and I recommend that before you paint. Uh, primer is really good. It's going to give the surface area uh, good adhesion to the paint itself. So uh, we've got these four and uh, we'll go ahead and rinse them off real good. 
get all the soap off of them. And you know, you'll be amazed once once they do dry, uh, you'll you'll tell a difference in the plastic coating. It'll, it'll be a lot more. Um, it'll be a lot more. Um, I guess the word I'm trying to say is that they'll be obviously be ready to put some paint on, but they're going to feel a little bit different, a little bit more drier uh, than uh, than maybe just out of the box, not as slick. And so you you'll be able to tell if you, you know, scrub them real good with some uh, soap that uh, if they're free of any type of uh, debris or uh, grease or anything that could have been upon those. So so we're done with those. Um, we're going to. Um, we're going to let those dry and uh, what I like to use basically is uh, we just, uh, just get a couple of paper towels here and uh, we'll let these guys hang out and uh, let them air dry. Obviously they need to be dry and free of any water before you start obviously priming and painting. All right, we are back for the last part of this video and um, just uh, as a quick reminder, we have, of course, removed all of our figures from the, um, the sprue. Uh, we have uh, uh, prepped uh, each figure, uh, removing any sort of flash, uh, any burrs from the bottom of the stands. And uh, we have uh, performed a wash uh, to clean off any uh, mold agents uh, that could be present on the figures themselves. And so now it's time to apply a primer. And uh, as you can see, uh, of course, with some of the miniatures which I've already uh, shown in the video, we have already uh, applied a coat of primer to these. And I highly recommend a good coat of primer, uh, not only for painting miniatures, but in particular with uh, uh, gaming, uh, as there's going to be a lot of handling of the miniatures. And you want uh, a good coat of primer that's going to, to allow that paint to adhere uh, properly uh, and not not easily flake off or crack uh, from the plastic miniature itself and um, so we've we've already started applying a coat of primer and uh, got a few figures a uh, few miniatures here from the box that I want to uh, show you um, I know a lot of you all certainly know how to uh, spray and prime uh, and again this uh, this video is intended to be in part for perhaps beginners or people that may have questions on how to apply uh, the steps it takes to get your uh, miniature uh, game ready and get it on the board for play. Uh, of course we've got uh, left over here, uh, we've got uh, one of the Austrian uh, minis, uh, we've got uh, an American commander, and uh, of course we've got uh, one of the German infantry. Now, uh, the blue guys over here, these are these are some French miniatures, which I didn't particularly touch on earlier uh, in the video, um, because the I guess the the ruling is still out on these guys. Uh, as you as you know, I talked about uh, what makes a good uh, game playing miniature uh, being of hard plastic as opposed to a more softer rubbery type plastic. Uh, I'm not I'm not a fan of it, nor do I want to waste any time and effort in uh, getting such miniatures painted uh, for purposes of gameplay. However, this, uh, this box uh, of uh, French miniatures from Hat, which uh, uh, I believe I did show the box earlier, but we really did not get into them. Uh, I really do like the sculpts on, the, on each of these. These are, these are really good sculpts. Um, the, uh, the uniforms look great. Um, here we've got a commander try to zoom in on this guy a little bit uh, looks good they match up pretty well to scale and uh, but uh, unlike the British miniatures which I did discuss these guys um, they are a little softer than the other miniatures which I did go through uh, but they're not as soft as the British miniatures from hat which I just did not like do not like and do not plan to put them on the game board uh, but uh, with some of these poses, they're not really in a pose that would allow for much in the way of bending. Um, you know, here we've got a guy with a bugle. Uh, I really like this guy a lot. And uh, so 
I'm going to take a chance on do about six of these guys and uh, we'll see how they turn out. Uh, but I do like the poses and of course I've got two commanders there which uh, uh, in later videos you'll see I've got some I've got some house rules which I'm working on for commanders in uh, Axis and Allies World War One, 1914. So these guys are going to play a part in that um, as will uh, some of the other alternative miniatures I've got. Uh, I'll zoom in here. Of course, you've got, uh, you've got some commanders here for the Germans as well. Uh, we've got some Austrian commanders, uh, each with a pistol designation. Uh, we also have um, a Turkish commander here. Uh, these are still drying, so I, I really don't want to pick them up. Uh, he's, he's laying face down. Uh, and uh, of course we have some American commanders as well. So again, I've, I've got some house rule plans for these. Um, so again, I'm going to, I'm going to take a chance on some of these French, uh, miniatures and we'll see how they work out. So we're going to try to wrap this up and, uh, just wanted to kind of show you what's been done and the, uh, the coat of, uh, primer, which, uh, which is, is needed before we get to the painting stage and uh, just real quick i want to show you the uh, the primer which i like is tamiya surface primer it's the light gray uh, i really like this i've been a been a fan of tamiya products for some time uh, throughout my modeling uh, life if you will but i do like the surface primer from tamiya and use use it quite a bit and it's uh, fairly reasonable cost wise at uh, uh, hobby lobby uh, some of your local hobby stores can be a, a bit pricier, but I do I do find that uh, Hobby Lobby has a great price on this and uh, Of course I encourage each of you to check around and see what the best deals are. Sometimes you can find it cheaper on eBay uh, but um, I try to shop as local as much as I can So this is a really good quality primer, which I have been using and I use quite often on minis and uh, So we're going to get started before we actually do the spray though um, I want to obviously I'm going to be using a mask I am outside which um, I prefer to be outside where it's uh, a bit more um, open air uh, you, you certainly don't want to breathe in these fumes whatsoever uh, I try to avoid doing any kind of priming painting in the garage area if possible uh, so when we've got good weather it's good to be outside and uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and get to uh, get this mask on get everything positioned and uh, we'll be right back Okay, we are back, and of course I've got my mask on. I hope uh, this video will, uh, the audio will be satisfactory. But um, I, uh, again, just do not want to take any chances of these fumes, and nor should you uh, in enjoying a hobby. You want to you wanna have a healthy hobby as well. And uh, also, just a quick note, obviously there's a lot of fumes and overspray that come out of uh, painting, and uh, you'll see... Um, in my work area outside, I've got a painter's cloth underneath the uh, surface, which will protect for any overspray. So, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll get these started. Uh, I've already uh, shaken the can vigorously. And uh, one other thing I would note is uh, being outdoors, um, temperature can be an issue. Uh, we've got some good temperature today. It's uh, well above 50 degrees. So, uh, so there's, there, there's no issues whatsoever with uh, priming today uh, it's actually great weather to do it uh, very hot day you can kind of get some stickiness and obviously very cold weather you're going to get some issues of stickiness and non-drying so this is a perfect temperature to get this done today so we're going to go ahead and get started and uh, just to kind of show you a few uh, quick steps here uh, we you want to coat uh, just sort of lightly uh, you don't want to goop it up really really bad uh, because the the point of a primer is, is just to get a coat on on the miniature itself not not to completely paint it but just to get a good solid coat of primer that uh, again later when you do apply your paint it'll have something good to stick to so we're going to go ahead and just uh, do a few quick passes over Okay. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna let these dry, and 
later what I'll do is I'll flip them over and uh, we'll go ahead and get um, get the rest of these uh, primed up and I'm removing my mask uh, since the fumes are gone so uh, so this is it I just wanted to, to show you the step of priming the miniatures and uh, next uh, in the next video we're gonna end this video it's went uh, fairly long and I, I appreciate those that have uh, stayed with me in this video and uh, I hope that uh, it has been helpful and so the next video what I'm going to be showing is uh, the actual choices of paints I'm going to go through the kinds of paint that I'm using uh, we're going to go ahead and get those painted uh, on those steps uh, of getting a, a few layers of paint and then once those are dried I'm going to go through the process of actually applying a polyurethane seal to the miniature itself which uh, will just make these uh, miniatures rock hard and perfect for uh, handling and gameplay on the game board for your Axis and Allies board games in particular in this case uh, obviously 1914 so so I appreciate you uh, joining me in this video um, I plan to uh, have another video out shortly again showing the uh, final stages getting these guys painted getting them sealed and getting them onto the game board. Uh, take care.